Guys, girls, uh, this is the uh, ATX power supply we looked at the other week, the uh, 500 watt, I believe it was. Let's see, what was this thing? Um, no, it's just a, it's just a 250 watt power supply. Um, the one that had the low uh, 5 volt standby, yeah. And we found a lot of uh, bad capacitors in here that were uh, bulged on the top, uh, quite a lot of them. Like, like, like uh, this thing for instance, See, it's clearly gone, uh, this one's bolted a bit on top as well, um, that one obviously, and so on, uh, I mean some of them looked okay, this one was slightly domed again, uh, we had a couple that looked alright, um, but we took them out, we took them all out of there, and um, most of them were uh, 2200 microfarad uh, capacitors, uh, to be honest, I think this one that a spare and this wasn't out of there this is just one that we thought about maybe fitting and, and then we didn't one two three four five six yeah so uh, i made a note like a little diagram basically that showed what went where so you can see one of them was a 1000 mic uh 10 volts and then the rest of them uh, a mixture of 2206 and 2210 but we can just put uh two sorry 2216 2210 but we could just stick 16 volt one in and replace all of them put 16s where the 10s were so here's a bag a hundred of them uh cost me about seven euros something like that and they turned up um the only one i don't have a a new replacement for is the the 10 microfarad sorry 1000 microfarad 10 volts and it's, it's bulged on the top um, so I had a, a bit of a, a dig around, I've, I've got some spare uh, capacitors, so let me see what I can find for that. Uh, I just need to see if I can find something that will physically fit in there, yeah, so these are just uh, salvage capacitors, I've got quite a lot of them. Uh, I could do with one that's quite a narrow shape that would actually physically fit, if I can, otherwise I'll, I'll have to use something else, yeah. Um, what's this thing here? Oh, that looks like it's gone. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, okay, so uh, I don't think I can find any that are physically quite the right size. There might be one down here. Uh, but I'm sure we, we can uh, fit something else in here, you know, that'll go. Let's have a look what we have here. This is a, uh, yeah, 105 degree. Uh, 1000 microfarad 10 volts that looks like it'll go let's see uh, if that's a, a good capacitor yeah and if it is we, we, we'll, we'll stick that one in there and then the rest we can replace with these new ones which to be quite honest i could probably put a 2200 in there as well i don't think it would actually cause any problems okay so here's the capacitance meter let's see what it thinks you'd expect this normally to be close to what it is we'll move it over if i can just get a good connection against it let's see positive negative oh it's reading like 1400 1500 so it's reading well higher that's that's not a problem uh, it's probably a good capacity let's see if i can find the uh, eso meter yeah let's look at the eso meter on it as well positive negative well let's just uh, zero it first so we'll switch it on there we go I'll just uh, clip the two clips together we'll just zero that yeah zero is near as damn it now let's have a look what this one is yeah that's quite low that, that's that's quite well I'm sure that's uh, suitable so we will use that so that solved the problem with the the 1010 and then the rest of them we, 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 we have a, a whole bag as I, as I showed you of uh, these are Sanyo I think uh, Chong X low ESR uh, 
2216 volts. They had, there's like hundreds of re reviews on here, and they all it's had like five stars, so I can only assume that lots of people have bought these and they've been fine. Okay, so what I'll do is now I'll uh, fit all these capacitors and then um, we'll come back to the video and let's see what happens. See you very soon. Okay, guys, so uh, I've soldered all the replacement capacitors. Um, so now we just want to uh, test this, but obviously we want to do it in a way uh, which is safe because there's a lot of high voltage in here. I mean, things here like, like this heatsink could well be live when we power up. Uh, anything on this side of the board, if you look here, there's like a big divide down the middle, yeah? A big gap here. And the only thing that bridges this gap are the transformers and the opto isolator, which is here, yeah? So all this side of, of the power supply from the transformers into that side is high voltage there's no ground there's nothing safe there yeah um so i've just given the i've just wiped down the desk but this is an anti-static mat it doesn't really conduct as such but with something like that i like to put onto sort of something like a big piece of cardboard or something yeah which is nice and clean there's no chance of anything shorting that yeah um, obviously this is the power coming in and it's going to be difficult to solder these back onto the the, the unit yeah so, so like the power connector is inside here and it's going to be i mean yes i could, I could kind of solder it like so but then i struggled to plug the power in um so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this uh, i've had this for many years this is called a safe block yeah so there's a fuse in here and there's like these two big metal uh, effectively that's a solid metal like a conducting thing there yeah where's well, a torch uh, these are useful bit of kit actually uh, so there's like a big metal conductor there and one this side of the fuse yeah which I think is uh, 5 amp or 10 amp fuse so the idea is you can see in here there's like these slots yeah so when I put this in and push down it connects the power coming in to these terminals but it only does it when it's down so you can't touch them yeah it's called a safe block. I'm not sure if that's a brand name or what it is. Uh, so we'll we'll take the power coming into the power supply, yeah, in the safe block. So that's safe. Yeah, that's the whole idea of it. it's safe. Um, we don't know what the condition of this thing is in. Um, we'll take the power f into the safe block from here, yeah, and this is connected via a 60 watt light bulb. Uh, I also have a 100 watt bulb in parallel, but I'm going to take that out for now. So, I'm just going to have a 60 watt light bulb, so power in. This is switched to limit, so it's via the 60 watt light bulb into the unit, yeah? And um, it should power up. It might st This might go bright and dim, it may start flicking because this has a... a does this have PFC? No, it just has a big... A big uh, like a passive PFC, so it shouldn't do that. It's the active PS, PFC that start this this pulsing on here, which which is normal. Um, so power switched off. Um, I have an isolation switch at the side there, which isolates both live and neutral. Yeah, so we can plug this into here now. It's set to limit. It's switched on. Um, how we know if it's going to work? But let's take the meter and uh, connect it to 5 volt standby because that's what the problem was that there was no 5 volt standby on this yeah so let's get the test meter as well set it to volts DC and into the uh, ATX connector so the purple wire is 5 volt standby we have 5 volt standby and the black wires are ground so like any of the black wires yeah so red in the 5 volt standby and then black into any of the black yeah black to black and really we're, we're ready to switch this on um we don't need to start the atx power supply we should get 5 volt standby if there's something short this will come on and stay on yeah and that's really about the worst thing that can happen with this so let's just switch it on and have a look yeah quick flick there oh and 5 volt standby okay so we fixed the problem on standby with this power supply okay switcher off now there's going to be a lot of charge in these capacitors yeah even though i've isolated the mains this is still got five volts on it's now discharging these capacitors using the five volt supply and that'll take a little while so i'm not going to touch that at the moment i'm going to wait till this goes back down to zero yeah 
once it's done that, I know it's drainage capacity. I mean, there could be high voltage on this heat sink here, yeah, which I'm not touching, by the way. We're getting close to. In fact, we could measure that just if we wanted to be sure. But you can see how long the power's off, yeah? Power's definitely off. I've, sw I've switched this off, yeah? I haven't even unplugged this, yeah? It's definitely off, and we can still see 5 volt standby. And it's going to take some while for that to discharge, I mean, even longer than I expected. So, if I pause this, it'll go all of a sudden, but let's see what happens. Okay, and there it goes. It took about another, probably another 20 seconds. I had it pause down, something like that, 20, 30 seconds. So, that's kind of like draining the, the power out of these capacitors, uh, the big ones, because obviously the 5 volt supply was still running. Yeah, but I'm not going to touch anything over there again. I'm going to, going to keep away from that. Yeah, so I don't really need to touch it. Um, what I do need to do is connect some sort of load to this. Uh, so I have a whole an old hard drive which I just use. I hear it spin up. I know I've got power. Yeah. Um, so let's go find that. One moment. Okay. So what I've done is um, I need to start the power supply now. So. I need to connect the green lead to ground to one of the blacks, yeah, uh, with a stiff bit of wire. This is actually a 22 ohm resistor, which is not exactly a bit of wire. It's 22 ohms rather than zero ohms, but that's low enough to start the ATX. And because these just have stiff leads on, they're very easy to poke down the the holes here and get a good connection, yeah. Uh, so I've used that just to just because it's easy. But you could use a stiff bit of wire. That was what you normally use. I'll connect the black metal lead to one of the blacks, yeah? I have a, a SATA hard drive which is faulty but it does spin. So we've connected that onto the power supplies on load. So if it powers up I should hear the hard drive spin up, yeah? And then I can just measure the voltages. We'll just see. Um, I've ordered a, a power supply analyzer. We'll do a review when it arrives. Uh, which you know you plug this into and it tells you if all the voltages are correct. Uh, I've connected the power but the power's still off at the moment. Um, so when I switch this on now I'm expecting it to to fire up. Um, I'll put it back onto uh, the limiter again yeah so it's on the, so the light bulb's back in series. So why have I done that? The switch is here. I pressed the wrong one that's my other limiter. That we will forget. <laughs> okay so we're back still coming through the light bulbs. I expect this to brighten then not go out but go dim because this is running a lot of power. And if so, I can just switch it to live, yeah? Because obviously now the whole power supply is uh, powered up and this is the last chance really for something to go bang. So let's switch it on. Hmm, can't hear the hard drive. Maybe that doesn't spin. Okay, so it's drawing a little bit of power. That's fine. Let's see if we have any voltages coming out of it. Yeah, there's 5 volts. I'll switch this to normal live now. I can hear the hard drive now. That's 5 volts. Yellow, I think, is 12. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yellow is 12. Red is 5. Orange is 3.3, .3, I think. Yeah. So we have all, we have all the voltages on, on, on it now. Yeah, it's all started up. It's running. 3.3. .3. Five. This is an old one, so it only has the one twelve volt connection on it. Uh, um, it also has the uh, little four way connector, which will be twelve volts, so we can check that. But yeah, she's running uh, quite happily, it seems. The twelve volts on here. Yeah, twelve volts. Okay, switch it back off again. I'll let it all settle down now at the capacitors discharge. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's working, guys. That's working. Um, I think we'll call that a success. I, I just need to put this back together now into its case. Uh, but I'm going to leave it a little while uh, for the capacitors to discharge. Um, there will definitely be a lot of high voltage still in this, and this is the thing you have to be very, very uh, careful of when you're you're working on this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, as long as you understand it and understand what the risks are, then that's okay. Yeah, that's okay as long as you understand what the risks are. If you don't understand what the risks are, then until you do, you shouldn't be working on this stuff. Yeah, make sure you understand what you're doing. Okay, guys, um, we've got to call that success. It's now working, so it was basically 
uh, faulty dry up capacitors that stop the 5 volt standby going to the correct voltage on this one. It's now good. Okay guys, see you on the next one.